bags down, spikes on. Welcome to the track. Hi, my name is Colin Waitsman, and I'm going to be your host for this episode of Track World News, presented by Track Barn. And today, we have a very special guest coming off of another U.S. championship. Uh, just getting back home last night around uh, 11.30 when we're recording this, so no, he's got to be uh, pretty tired. Uh, Tokyo uh, finalist in the triple jump, PR of, what, 17.43 out of EMU. Uh, we have Donald Scott. Donald, thank you for, for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Oh, man, it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to finally get together, man. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And it, it's cool. I actually, so I remember when you were at, you're at the Grand Prix the other day or the other week, um, and you gave me the, uh, I still got the bib right here. <laughs> from, hey, I, forget, I, I forgot I even gave it to you, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got, I forgot I even gave it to you. So that, that really started a, like a trend. So a couple weeks ago, competing at the, the Grand Prix and they, what's really cool about that is they have all of like the kids and everything can, you know, get autographs and fun after that. And so you were the first person to give, give a bib away. And then right when you walked out, all these little kids were like, Oh my God, you can just do that. And so you started a whole thing. Every, every athlete that came around, can I have your bib? Can I have your bib? It was, it was funny. So it was like, they're all looking at me like, you can do that. I'm like, I, I guess I don't need, I, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man give whatever you want away you feel yeah. me give our whole uniform yeah. <laughs> if we want to. it was, it was yeah. funny yeah seeing all the kids like oh my god i didn't even know i'm like yeah well there there you go there you go <laughs> uh so well before we get into um you know some of the the track and field stuff and you know obviously what you had this this previous weekend first had a few fan questions uh and then wanted to talk about some you know off the track stuff so first one this is coming from Fred Curley. So uh, he said, why are you so hungry about this season? Man, I got a lot, you know. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but um, there's a lot going on in my personal life that's, you know, uh, just kind of pushing me to keep going. And actually a lot of events that has happened throughout my life is the reason why um, it's like I'm a fighter. Um, I got to keep going until I get to where I want to be. Um, and it's like, even when I get there, I still got to keep going. It's like this, this, it's something in me that has to, you know, prove something to myself, you know, and um, I just want to accomplish a lot of things in life. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, that's something for me as well. When I was going through, um, you know, just whether it's athletics or academics, find, find personal stuff, like a lot of the motivations to succeed came from, you know, what was going on with, outside of the, the entire sport. It's like, you know, I want to yeah. win. It doesn't have a whole lot to do with act the actual track aspect of it. It's got to do with some of the stuff going on, you know, in the, in the personal life too. So I can, I can yeah. tell what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't speak about it, but I just use it as energy. You feel me? So mm -hmm. it's like a lot of people want to do good and stuff, but they don't have what it actually takes. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's like they say it, but they don't put the actions behind it. You know, they don't put the thought because it's an everyday thought. Uh, it, it's an everyday thought to be a gold medalist or um, um, it's like to even want to break a world record, you got to think about it every single day. You feel me? You got to do the same stuff every single day to, you know, stay consistent and then get there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, from the outside looking in, it might seem like, oh yeah, you just, you just gotta be, you know, have a really good day, triple jumping or, or, you know, sprint the fastest. <laughs> That's all it is. Like, no, yeah. this is. Like, and then people say, oh, it's just every, you just got to, you know, you're training for four years to do it. Like, no, like this is, you've been training for this thing for your, your entire life for this, yeah. you know, one 10 minute competition or whatever it might be. So it's a, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, next one comes from Cashel Pie. Uh, he says, what is your favorite pastime outside of track and field? My favorite pastime. Yeah. Um, there's really no favorite, man. I just, it's like with me, I take every, every moment in day by day because 
you never know what each day is gonna, you feel me, bring to you. So um, I would say it's no favorite time. You know, I mean, of course the, um, it's like the birth of my daughter for sure. You know, like as once she came to this world that, that has set a fire in me too. You feel me, want to keep going and achieving things. Um, Cause it's like, uh, it's a blessing to be able to tell your kids stories and then to actually, um, it's like get to uh, have them there at meets to see it. And um, uh, it's like, hopefully I um, engrave something in her to, you know, uh, it's like for sure be the best that she wants to be for me one day. So that's, that's, I'll say that's one favorite pastime. A memory or you know yeah i mean yeah because yeah, she's gonna be growing up and you know when you know when you're in school saying uh like oh yeah what is uh what is what does your mom do what does your dad yeah, do whatever exactly. it is like yeah my my dad was you know, have, take a look at have you seen the olympic you've, you've heard of the olympics right <laughs> my dad was there <laughs> yeah my dad's an olympian yeah <laughs> yeah wait what yeah, yeah yeah he was there like he he was the best in the united states a couple times too so that, that was that was my dad so we'll have a she'll have a couple of times of like Oh yeah, yeah I want to I want to aspire to be great as well just like, you know, for pops, you know. So there you go. Yeah, man, that's 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 what it's all about, man, getting your kids, you feel me, some motivation and and you know, to help them get to where they got to be in life and you feel me, hopefully they um uh you know, hopefully they embrace it and do something with it, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, then this is actually fairly similar coming from Christopher Cook. He says, how do you balance uh, family and being a professional athlete? Man, uh, even when you add a family to it, it just makes it more busier, you know, but it's something that you got to do is your responsibility, you know? So um, it's, it's like the schedule, people don't change. I still wake up, practice, you know, um, uh, just still handle with my daughter um, in the mornings. I drop her off at daycare. You know, I go straight to practice. Uh, after practice, I'll um, I come out and hang out at the crib for a little bit. And then I'm back out doing something, whether it's coaching or, you know, doing something. Um, I'm always busy. Um, but the balance is just, it's just trying to, just make sure I find enough hours in the day, <laughs> yeah. especially with a little one, man. Um, especially being hands on with a little one, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a lot, but it's what we got to do as, as parents. And, uh, and once again, it's my responsibility. So I got to do it. There you go. There you go. It's one added yeah. thing that you gotta, gotta worry about. Um, yeah. and so first want to transition a bit. So you, uh, you're from originally from Florida and you're at Michigan now, Eastern Michigan. Yeah. So yeah. you usually don't see it go that way. It's usually people going from Michigan down to Florida. You don't see a lot of people leaving that, that Florida heat to go up to where it, you know, it might be, it might even be snowing where you're at right now. Who knows what, yeah. <laughs> what's uh what made you think, you know what, I'm going to flip this whole thing around and, and go up to where it's, you know, cold up, up North. <laughs> Actually, man, for some reason, I mean, I don't blame them, but um, it's like a, a lot of schools up north, they love Florida boys, man. They they go, <laughs> um, it's like they go down there and, and you feel me, offer full rides just to come up here, you feel me? So it's like, all right, why not? Um, I didn't have a whole lot of offers. Um, it's like for football due to um, my school being, um, it's like a wing tee offense type yeah. of thing mm -hmm. so um it's a lot of a lot of running back uh plays and play action tight end stuff I got the ball for sure but it wasn't a you know like a a spread type of school to where I, um it's like I, um it's like to where I could really stand out so uh Eastern Michigan I actually played in a spring game as a running back you feel me that game I played receiver and um it just so happens I scored five times that game. It was it was weird, but I had a good time at running back that game. Mm -hmm. um, and then Eastern Michigan was actually there to see 
um, another athlete. Um, another athlete on the opposite team and they just seen what I did and um I got a call like next week hey we're interested this 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 and I took a visit and whatnot and then I was like all right do I want to go to army or navy you feel me over Thune Cookman that offered me or fam you like uh nah I'd rather go to a uh it's like um a division one you feel me so I chose Eastern Michigan. And then from there, um, I was allowed to play football on the full ride. And then I also walked on to the track team. Hmm. And uh, I just did all four sports all four years. That's, uh, that's wild to think like you walked on to the sport that you're now professional athlete in. I mean, that's, yeah. you don't, you don't see it that way. <laughs> <laughs> like I know yeah. there's a, there's a few people that had played football in college. I know I we had interviewed Marvin Bracy before. He, he did the, you know, FSU and, and track and football. And But you don't see someone like, oh, yeah, we're on the, you know, we're on the football team and then walking on. Like, what's that? What, what was that like knowing, <laughs> hey, we're now a professional in this sport. We, we, we were just kind of doing as a little extra thing there. Um. Again, I was just a football guy. I just took triple jump as if it was something to keep me busy, you know, um, especially in high school. When I got to college, I didn't have to do it. I could have just stayed with football, but it's like, hey, why not keep going and, you know, do two sports, you know? But um, it was a pretty, pretty busy time doing that because um, football is, is basically all year round. You feel me? So I'll, I'll, um, I'll do football camp in the summertime. I'll go throughout the season. And after that last game, you feel me, November-ish, I believe, I'm right to the track. And then by then, it's, it's indoor season. You feel me? So I only have, like, a couple of weeks to practice triple. And then, boom, I'm, I'm doing indoors, you know. But um, I was just talented, man. Um, I'd go out there and – and win just off of a few weeks of practices, you know, around my sophomore year and, and stuff like that. I wasn't on the, like, I wasn't ranked high in the collegiate level. Um, I was probably like in the twenties at the time, jumping like 52 feet or 51 feet, you know, as a freshman in college. And then, I don't know, um, I just got good, man. Um, especially around my, uh junior year is when I knew I could possibly do something but um I still wanted to stick with football you feel me so yeah track has just always been a thing that I've done on the side until I decided to walk away from football um it's like the end of my senior year of football season um and then I just I just gave it a shot I mean I didn't know I was going to be here I didn't know, but I knew that I had a lot to improve if I really just focused on track. Because trying to, if you have a triple jump at 200 pounds, that's a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot. But, um, yeah, man, I just took it serious, had to slim down, and and now I'm on Olympia, man. And, and, and it's a blessing to even, um, it's like, call myself that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it had to be when you're lining up at those at your first college meets, probably or uh, you know, in, in the indoor season, you had to be the biggest, like the, the you know, the biggest guy there. <laughs> what is this? Well, what we got this wide receiver coming on <laughs> triple jump. Man, I was I was just trying to muscle my way down that track and jump, man. <laughs> and and I no real technique at all. There you go. Well, still working it, working it out, working it through. Well, you didn't yeah. actually start with uh, the triple jump. Like, I think you're, you're meant like your high school coach had even kind of convinced you to do this, uh, this event that you're Olympian now. I mean, could you, couldn't you kind of touch on like how that all started, like your beginning here in, uh, here in track? Yeah. Um, I just, I just stepped on the track uh, my freshman year at a popular high school in Florida. Um, um, and then high school coach at the time, who's also, I called him my father today. He's also a good mentor um, um, of mine. Um, I started off with the with 300 meter hurdles in the 110s, actually. I wanted to do the sprints, but I wasn't quite fast enough, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, he, he, 
approached me one day, um, just like, hey, come triple jump. I was like, what's this? And he just showed me a simple hop, skip, and a jump. And I'm just like, all right, it's like, it looked fun, you feel me? So I go ahead and try it. You know, so I was, I'm always the type just about to, you know, give things a go and, and just see how I do. And um, uh, it's like my first time I jumped 49. It's like, okay, all right, let's see what I can do, you know? So, yeah, um, I was, I did the hurdles. I was all state in the hurdles, 300 meter hurdles, you know, a state finalist, all that. Um, I could have went to school to do the four, the 400 meter hurdles, but it's funny because I came up to Eastern um, around, around the summertime um, and and they hosted the United States track and field junior Olympics. And um, I had to do the triple jump and the 400 meter hurdles. It was my first race ever in the 400 meter hurdles. Mm -hmm. And that last hundred hurt so bad. <laughs> I went from second to all the way eighth in less than a hundred meters. I'm like, ah, man, but <laughs> yeah. Um, it was uh it was a good time. My football coaches was over there watching me and and stuff. So it's like, all right, guys, we got ourselves a two sport athlete, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah. Um, after that, you know, college came, and then I just I just studied a lot, man, to get to where I am today. I studied Christian. I studied Will. I studied a few O jumpers, you know. And it was like, wow, I can do that. So let me actually study and see how I'm actually supposed to triple jump, you know? And then um, Chris Huffins was my coach at the time at Eastern. And then after he uh, left, that's when my coach, uh, Coach Sterling Roberts came in. And that's when we really took off and triple jump. You know, we, we um, it's like we started to break down phases and speed and all that stuff. So it's still a learning process still to, um, to today, man. It's all a learning process. Mm -hmm. Hey. First ever time triple jumping, doing 49 feet. That's no joke. I, like, I was. It took me three or four years to just get 40 feet. Not like, yeah, my first time I, I went over nearly jumped 50. I'm like, damn, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. So had some had I'm some just, talent. In it. <laughs> I'm just powerful and strong, man. Um, I've always been like the power jumper, you know. Um, now I'm just trying to work on speed and power. Mm -hmm you know, to produce what I got to do, you know? There you go. There you go. And you mentioned, like, you did a lot of studying of Will Clay and uh, Christian Taylor. Like, what, what was it like going from studying some of their tapes to competing against them at the world stage as well? Was that, like, a, a weird type Man. of thing, or what was, what was that like? Yeah, it was, it was like, all right, I really, <laughs> I really did that, you know? Um, it's like starting off watching those guys, it was like, God, man, these guys jumping far. You feel me? Like how? To, how? Mm -hmm. How? You feel me? So I just, I just stayed patient, man. And um, I even got. Actually, it was um, I qualified for, um, it was the East NCAA um qualifications to go to a nationals. Yeah in college and I just remember man I I was still ranked like 20th in the um um in the country in triple jump and then just watching those guys in person Will Christian um it was just like wow I'm finally here watching these guys after just watching them on YouTube and studying them and then it's like about my sophomore year um in junior year I was like highly competing with those guys um in the same meets and stuff I have pictures um I actually got one picture of me and Will at one Drake Relays when I was in college you know <laughs> mm -hmm. um and it's like um it's crazy because I sent Will that picture like probably like like four months ago mm -hmm. and he was like oh man that's a blessing bro I'm glad to see you here and and this 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 you know, so that made me feel good. But um, yeah, man, I just 
study. I study a lot and I just do what I see and also put my own, um, um, it's like my own touch behind it, you know, but it's a blessing to be out here to compete against all the older guys that I watched, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I want to flash forward to today or to this past mm -hmm. year. So qualify for your first Olympic team. Um, like what, what was the feeling of that? Because you had, you had went out for it in 2016, came up a little bit short. So what's the feeling this past year when, you know, you're all of that kind of time work effort comes to fruition and you're now a member of that, that USA team that you had been working out for. It was good. Cause I, um, I told myself after 16, you feel me, I'm not going to dwell. I'm not going you feel me get upset because I knew I was young. I was what? Uh, 16. Yeah. I was fresh out of college. You feel me? So although I, I had high expectations and I was jumping what I needed to jump. Um, it was just an overall experience at 16. You know, I was like, wow, I'm here. You feel me? So that puts a lot of pressure on yourself instead of, um, it's like relaxing a bit and, and uh, it's like truly focusing. I can't say I forced a lot back then, um, but to make this team now, it uh, it just shows, man. If you just, it, it's like no matter how many times you fail, if you keep that same that same will and um, and determination to get back to that spot, and um, it's like only you can get yourself there. And uh, to come out there to do that, it feels good, especially in front of my daughter. You know, mm -hmm. what was yeah, that? Man. Did you so did you see her in the stands after they after you realize that you know you're in top three? Like when what was that like? Like, oh man, like you know, we're it's it's kind of like the the Super Bowl, we're going to Disneyland moment or whatever. What, yeah. what was that like? Man, I just know how how much I put into this and how much I think about it, and it's like how much I want is like to have her there and witnessed that it was it, um it was definitely a surreal moment you feel me and it's like although she can't really um uh, uh it's like although um it's like she don't know what's really going on it's like she's there you feel me yeah. so that energy of her just being there it's like all right bro all this is for her yeah you feel me it's for myself too but in the end you feel me it provides it it shows it shows her, you feel me, that you can do anything that you put your mind to if you work hard for it, you know? Yeah, and it's I'm sure. Feeling, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, and sure, I'm sure it's something that she'll look back at, you know, when she's older and can kind of really recognize yeah. the the grand, the grand grandness of that moment of like a, oh, yeah, no, that was a, that was a big moment for, <laughs> for yeah. this family that we got going on. Yeah, like that was a, yeah. that was a, a major thing for sure. And yeah, man, that's why I try to always have her there to take pictures on the podium and, you know, all that good stuff, man, because all this is just memories. Although it's my job, it's fun and whatnot, but it's, it's setting, you feel me? Um, it's setting something up for her too, you know? Yeah. And so you're now, you're with Adidas now, uh, right? Yeah. yeah and, and so yeah. I wanted to talk about that journey because you were start, if I remember correct, you started off your professional track uh, career, you know, unsigned for the first few years. And so now, now with, you know, Adidas, one of the, the larger, larger brands in the running space. I mean, what was that kind of journey like of, you know, being a, an unsigned athlete and versus now like having, you know, one of those major brands behind you? You know, what what kind of could you kind of take us behind the scenes what what that might have been like yeah um as an athlete man we it's like sometimes we um it's like think we deserve a lot just because we're doing something and um i had to sit back and be like especially the way you feel me um it goes and field events and all that you have to do you know just to get a sponsorship in field events um, it's not as easy. Um, it's like for us than sprinters and stuff like that, you know. So um, it's like back then, although I was I was 
um, I was placing top five and this, this, this. It's like, I just had to be patient overall. <clears throat> and then I got with an agent, you know, that's well known in the industry and, um, and whatnot. So I went unsigned from 2016 all the way up to 19, you know, so uh, it's like between those years I had to work. Um, I had to find side jobs and um, it just made sure I had money in my pocket to travel and, and do stuff with, but um, I left off prize money, you know, so I wasn't, um, I wasn't too down about it, but I did feel like I deserved something. But um, after I won in 2019, you know, that's when I got my contract and uh, that, that took, it took a big monkey off my shoulders. So now <laughs> I can sit and actually truly focus and put in the right hours that I got to do on the track and stuff like that. And, um, you know, so that, that, that definitely helped me and my family out, you know? So yeah, man, it was a blessing just to go through that whole process and stay patient through the process. And, and, uh, it really made me feel like I, I deserved and I earned it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, after so many years. Yeah. I'm sure it feels now like you can, you, it makes it so like, I guess, humbling experience or recognize where you're coming from. It's like, yeah, like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I might be complaining about whatever thing might be going on in my life right now. But, you know, I, I remember when, you know, things were a little bit, you know, not, not, not too different just a few years ago. Uh, yeah. yeah. So can help you help you out with that. Um, yeah. And so recently just coming off of your, I believe this was your third U S championship. When was that right? Indoors and outdoors. Does that sound. Nope. Um, this was my fourth. Fourth. Okay. Indoors. Um, it's my third indoors in a row. Um, it's my fourth overall. And then I have two outdoors underneath me. So that's six total. Okay. There you go. Uh, and then, so coming off of recent win, um, what was it? Could you break us down for us? Like, what was, uh, what was that all, all like? Oh man, it's, I just treat indoor as, as a prep for outdoors, you know, um, the goal isn't to go out there and, and break a world record or, or nothing like that. Just use it as practice. That's what me and my coach always says. Our right, indoors is just for practice, you know, so don't highly expect a lot, you know, so Again, I just um, I just been working on some things I practiced that I wanted to do um, at this meet, and um, and number one was just run off the board, and uh, I've been focusing on my phase one and phase two, you know, so that um, that, that went well this weekend. Um, I have a sprained, um, um, it's like I have some ligaments around my talus that's that's sprained right now, so I had that for about a month. Um, but I taped that boy up and had to fight through it, you know, so I don't think nobody knew that, but, um, yeah, it was just, I was just trying to, you know, do what I got to do, you know, um, it was some smack talking going on, but I just let it go and, uh, <laughs> it just came out with the win, man. That's, that's what I wanted to do was make that indoor team and, and, uh, I got the job done. That's <laughs> There we go. There we go. Yeah, we saw. I think the fans got just a little, little taste of some of that smack talking. Uh, there, there, there was uh, a few clips of them showing back of the the footage. Some people chirping back and forth or whatever. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. And, going on. Yeah, that's where. It's, um, ain't I didn't know that went on. Um, I went to the back. Um, after my third jump, and um, um, I I heard some stuff going on, but I didn't. I wasn't out there to see it, but um, I looked on TV and um, I seen Chris and Will going at. It. I'm like, oh, all right, that happened. <laughs> and um, and then they called us out to go out to the back and um, to bring us out for intros. Um, you know, for our final three jumps. And um, I didn't know that Chris Carter was. Um, he got ahead of me. I didn't know at all. But um, yeah, I heard uh, it was some stuff going on. Um, after he got into it with me a little bit. But um, I was, he had jumped in first about three centimeters. Um, it's like going into the finals. And then uh, that's one of my fourth jump. I came back out there and took the lead. There you go. 
There we go. Awesome. Yeah, we saw a little 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 snippet of it, but um, yeah, cool to get a little backstory. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's it's just trash talk. It's yeah. to hype each other up or something. I don't know, but I'm the type that should show up, man, do what I got to do, and you feel me, stay out the way. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I feel I'll talk you. back if you want to talk, though. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. The, that Florida boy got to come out at some point, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I stay quiet sometimes, but it's like, all right, I'm about tired of it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And um, so now I wanted to take take it off the track for for a little bit. Um, is it? I saw that you do, done some work with uh, helping out with juveniles, other youth within yeah. um, you know the great area that you're that you're in. Could you kind of touch on you know what what it is that you're doing, trying to help out the youth, and maybe you know, where that originally uh, came from that got you interested in, in doing something like this? Yeah, man. So being in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, man, um, that's where that's where I was raised and born. At um, I mean, born and raised. That uh, it's 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 tough out there, man. You know, I had to go through a lot at a young age. I had to grow up. You feel me? Do a lot of things independently as uh, as a jit like a uh, probably seven eight years old I started driving when I was like eight <laughs> I started driving like my um my uh my parent at the time you know she taught me how to drive I was like all right and then um I remember one day <laughs> I had to pick up my sisters <laughs> I had to pick up my sisters from somewhere at nine years old man just by myself <laughs> um it's like just driving it's like wow who does that at a young age, you know? So again, I had to grow up at a young age and and it's like being around in that community is tough, you know? It's a lot of violence, drugs, and just, you know, um, it was times where I ain't have no water at the crib, no electricity, no food, you know, so sleeping in the dark. It's like not eating at times, gotta go next door to take, you feel me, showers or you feel me, heat up, heat up hot water on the stove and put it in the bucket type stuff, you know? So that's the way I grew up, you feel me? And and it's like, it's it's like when I I got adopted, um, it's like when my sisters got adopted and moved from that to, I'll say middle class, you know, when I moved to Apopka, you know? So we moved from, Feel me, that to middle class, and we had to adjust. You feel me? We had to learn how to how to eat with. You feel me? A napkin in our lap, and <laughs> and cut up. You feel me? Stuff with, you know, and back at the crib, we just use our hands, just eat. You feel me? So I had to learn a, a lot. I had to change my. You feel me? My it's like my thinking of how I thought. You feel me? And, and it's like when that happened, that's when I, I started joining sports. Um, that's when I started sports in high school. That was when I was in Fort Lauderdale. I was just running the streets, man. <laughs> I, I was running the streets, skipping school in elementary. You feel me? And it's just like, I wasn't alive for a, a, a kid. But it taught me how to be independent at a young age. It taught me how to fight, how to not depend on nobody. You feel me? So it's like all that stuff is still engraved in me, you know? Um, it's like, I know how to survive. Um, I wasn't sheltered, you know? Um, yeah, but at the same time, it, um, it's like when I got to college, um, I just became more wiser, you know? And it's like, I want to help the kids who who don't have the chance to even get to college. You feel me? I want to give kids the thoughts of going to college. And, and it's like, um, I just want to teach them that it's like that gang lifestyle and, and abuse, whatever they may be going through outside of, of whatever, you feel me? they could change their life around. They could do better from it, you know, rather than stay and be stuck in a bad community or, you know, going to jail back and forth and stuff. Cause I went to juvie. I went, I went to juvie twice as a teenager, you know? And it's like, that's not, that's not how a kid should be raised and taught, you know? Cause it's so much to this life that 
you feel me? Parents don't even allow their kid to see, you know? Um, it's like some people don't even leave Florida to visit it, uh, anywhere else, you know? So I just want to be that, that mentor in, in kids' lives that uh, it's like, like that, especially now being who I am. It's like, bro, you don't have to be stuck. You feel me where you at? You know, you can go out here and, and actually do something. But it's like for some people, it's it's hard to break that mentality when you see all, all this negative stuff every day, killings, drugs, you know, all that stuff. I seen all that stuff at a young age. You know, um, I'm, I remember being like, I think like seven and hearing a loud noise in my backyard. If you feel me, I go back outside, it's a body right there. And it's like, oh wow, that's what a dead body looked like. You feel me? So it's like, I, I've seen and went through so much throughout my life to where it shows, you feel me, through, you know, who I am today, you know? Mm. But yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, Growing up through something like that, I mean, yeah, it's definitely going to, like you said, make you make you grow up like pretty quickly. Um, yeah. I mean, so that's that's stuff like like for for me on a much much smaller scale. But my my yeah. cousin my cousin was taken from us, you know, by violence when I was younger, when I was like seven eight years old. I know mm-hmm. seven years old. And so it's like, okay, like that. My best friend was here yesterday not here today like that's just how it goes and like so it's like you gotta so things are like this is real life like things are things are different it's not just like uh we all you know every it's not a storybook ending every time or whatever it might be so it's uh that can teach you about you know growing up or whatever it is and now with with you having a you know being a mentor for some of these kids and, and having a daughter i'm sure that you're like no yeah i don't i don't want you to have to go through some of that stuff that i was going through in florida i want you to have a you know uh, a better life or you know whatever that might be yeah man I, I i definitely don't want my daughter to be going through none of that but she's definitely going to know what you feel me it takes to get to where you got to be mm. i'm not going to hand anything to her you know i'm not going to shelter her like that i'm just if you're going to let her you know do things and yeah i should make mistakes on her own you know i'll be there to guide her you know tell her hey it's what I went through and and this is what I advise you to do. And it's like from there, man, you just gotta let them grow up. Because if you shelter a person, man, that it's not good. <laughs> it's not good because it can show um in their adulthood for sure. Yeah, you need to learn from your mistakes just as much as you learn from your successes, you know, and whatever yeah. it is in life. So you know, try it out. Like, yeah, I'll I'll let you know what I think you should do and then. If you, don't, if you want yep. to end up not doing it, you'll you'll see the repercussions. <laughs> like you want to touch the stove, you'll see. I told you not to, but your hands gonna be hurting for the next month if you do. So I just want to let yep. you know that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Well, um, so a little tough transition, but looking forward for for track. Like obviously, we got world championships coming up for indoors and outdoors now this year, and then you've got. You know, the Olympics 2023, we got a lot of stuff coming on, or 2024, yeah. sorry, uh, 2024. A lot of stuff coming on within the next uh, next few years. Like, what what's kind of your goal? What's your focus, you know, going through with the remainder of this season uh, and everything like that? Yeah, man, these next, what, four to five years are, are, are big and important, you feel me? So I feel like I'm in a time to really do something, you know. Um, you know, my body feels good. And um, I'm just ready to do what I got to do these next, um, it's like four to five years, just stay consistent, you know, just, you know, because if you stay consistent, you'll eventually continue to get better, you know, but you have ups and downs and, 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 and all this stuff, who knows how um, it'll play out for you. But I just want to stay consistent and just keep doing what I got to do, man, you know, that's it. That's pretty much it. I take, I take everything day by day. Um, you know, I just get up, practice, and all right, I got to meet. All right, go out there and compete. But I just take, um, it's like everything day by day. You just go for it. You know. There you go. There you go. And last question for you. So I saw this uh, digging through a few of your older interviews. You mentioned that 
you also really like singing and songwriting as well. Uh, what's the, can, can we hear, have you wrote, written nah. any songs since college? I'm tired. I retired, man, but uh, I played around with music in, <laughs> in college a little bit, man. But uh, yeah, I sang a little bit, you know, I like, um, I just like music, man. It, it, it's peaceful. Um, uh, it's like rather it's hip hop, rap, you feel me, R and B, you know, something to you know get me moving, and uh, it 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 takes my mind off things, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I did write a whole album though. <laughs> I wrote a whole uh, album. Uh, um, but yeah, man, I just like music overall, you know. Um, I played the trumpet in high school, you know. Um, I mean, not high school, but middle school. You know, so yeah, music just it uh it brings me peace. <laughs> there we go. So it me peace for sure. So it sounds like uh that might just be a, a that might be a triple jumper thing. We know Will Clay got his uh he's rapping yeah. too. Yeah, maybe we gotta get a feature or something, man. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll see about that one. <laughs> there you go. But we'll see, uh, Donald, thank you so much for for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. Great hearing about. Uh, your story, where you came from, what you're doing now, what you plan on doing in the future. Uh, where could people go if they wanted to, you know, follow you more closely on social media or, or anything like that? I'm at go on Instagram. Um, uh, you guys follow me at Donald Scott underscore. Um, it's LL, but it's supposed to mean the second. But um, uh, and then same also on Twitter. It's the same. Uh, it's the same tag name. Um, I stay up to date on everything. You know. Um, I try to post up with my, uh, my up type of competitions and, and post practice videos to let people see what I'm doing and stuff like that. You know, I just post just to, uh, keep up with content. I don't do it to talk trash or I say, Hey, everybody, this is what I'm doing. I'm ready. This is this. Nah, it's just for content. And, and, um, I like, I, I just like content. I like pictures. I like, you can put videos together. I like all that stuff. I'm, I'm a creator, mm -hmm. you know, in my mind. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Donald, for joining us. And thank you to everyone for listening. This has been another episode of Track World News. If you want more content, go and follow us over on Instagram at Track World News. We post a whole bunch of different highlights, clips, news, things like that. Uh, that's going to do it for us here. Have a good one. Peace.